Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought today we would have a look at the World War II aircraft carriers in the game and have a look at a user mission where they are playable. If you want to get access to the user mission, it's in the description and it's a pretty simple way of playing it. Um, it basically tells you how to install it um, when it comes to your version of War Thunder. At the same time, these World War II carriers were updated pretty recently to make them high definition and I think they're going to go the same way as the modern aircraft carriers which is of course uh, to become eventually playable things in the game. A lot of these have guns on them, a lot of these can defend themselves in different ways and also of course launch planes and have a bit of fun with it. And we'll go through each of them and give a bit of history uh, from various websites on them and uh, give you a little bit of a rundown on what we actually have in the game of War Thunder. As always, if you like the content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also like the video. Let's get started. The first carrier is the HMS Illustrious. This was the fourth vessel to bear the name HMS Illustrious and was built as the lead ship of the Illustrious class of aircraft carriers built for the Royal Navy and also started just before the outbreak of the Second World War. In 1936, the Royal Naval Program called for the construction of two new aircraft carriers, and rather than simply modifying the existing configuration being used for the previously unarmoured Ark Royal design. It was decided that these new carriers should be the first to have armoured flight decks. At that time, it was also decided that carriers could never successfully defend themselves by simply deploying their own aircraft, especially without some form of early warning system allowing them to preempt the incoming threat. It was also felt that current carrier designs were extremely vulnerable to attack by land-based aircraft, as they sailed within easy reach of coastal air bases. The program also prescribed that new carriers should be capable of protecting their fragile squadrons of aircraft despite sustained attacks. This meant a change in approach and a compromise between a carrier's offensive potential capabilities against a major increase in its defensive survivability. With the new concept and final designs agreed, the HMS Illustrious was laid down at yard number 732 at Barrow on the 23rd of April 1937. Initial construction at Barrow and Furnace suffered with a large number of unwanted delays, mainly created by the slow deliveries of armoured plate and also other essential materials. In the main, this was due to the low capacity within the steel industry, which had been severely cut back due to the lack of orders as a direct result of the Washington Naval Treaty agreed some 15 years earlier. The treaty had called for surviving ex-World War I ships to be modified, and this had almost eliminated orders for new build naval ships. Such was the shortage of raw materials meant that the flight deck armor was eventually ordered from the Vitkovits mine and iron corporation based in Czechoslovakia. The specification called for an overall length of 740 feet with a width of 710 feet at the waterline. Her beam was calculated to be 95 feet 9 inches at the waterline with a draft of 28 feet 10 inches at deep load and a displacement of 23,000 long tons at standard load. The HMS Illustrious was launched on the 5th of April 1939, where she was christened by Lady Henderson, wife of the recently retired Admiral Sir Reginald Henderson, 3rd Sea Lord of the Royal Navy. After slipping into the water, she was towed into the Blucco dock at Barrow for fitting out for her complement of around 1,299 officers and also enlisted men. The next one is the USS Enterprise, which was a Yorktown class aircraft carrier. It was commissioned at Newport News, Virginia on the 12th of May 1938. Relocating to the Pacific, she was at sea during the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on the 7th of December 1941. Three days after, she became the first US Navy warship to sink a Japanese warship, Submarine I-70, and later that month participated in the Wake Island Expedition. In April, Enterprise covered the Doolittle Raid on Japan and participated in the Battle of Midway that June, where her planes helped sink three Japanese aircraft carriers and a cruiser. During the Guadalcanal campaign, she covered the landings and participated in the battles of Eastern the Solomons and Santa Cruz Islands. Despite being damaged in both battles, she launched aircraft to assist the ships involved in the Battle of Guadalcanal. 
In late 1943 and early 1944, Enterprise took part in the Gilberts and Marshall invasions and air attacks on the Japanese in the Central and Southern Pacific. In the summer of 44, she participated in the Marianas Operation and the Battle of the Philippine Sea, followed with the largest naval battle in history, the Battle of Lake Gulf in October. In February of 45, Enterprise took part in the Iwo Jima invasion, then raids on the Japanese home island and the Okinawa campaign in April. Due to damage received by two kamikaze attacks in April and May, she returned to the United States, with the distinction of being the most decorated US Navy warship during the war. Following Japan's surrender, she helped transport US servicemen back to the United States. Decommissioned in February of 47, Enterprise was redesigned the CVA-6 in October of 52, and then the CV-6, CVS-6 sorry, in August of 1953. Despite efforts to turn her into a museum ship, she was sold for scrapping in July of 1958. We also have the USS Lexington, which was commissioned in 1943. She set more records than any other Essex-class carrier in the history of naval aviation. The ship was the oldest working carrier in the United States Navy when decommissioned in 1991. An Essex-class carrier, Lexington was originally named the USS Cabo. During the Second World War, final construction was being completed at Massachusetts Fort River Shipyard, when word was received that the original carrier named USS Lexington CV-2 had been sunk at the Coral Sea. The new carrier's name was changed to Lexington. After training maneuvers and a shakedown cruise, Lexington joined the 5th Fleet at Pearl Harbor. The 5th Fleet was established in the 26th of April 1944. At this time, it was Central Pacific Force. During the Second World War, the carrier participated in nearly every major operation in the Pacific Theater and spent a total of 21 months in combat. Her plane destroyed 372 enemy aircraft in the air and 475 more on the ground. She sank or destroyed 300,000 tons of enemy cargo and damaged an additional 600,000 tons. The ship's guns also shot down 15 planes and assisted in downing five more. The Japanese reported Lexington sunk no less than four times, yet each time she returned to fight again, leading the propagandist Tokyo Rose to nickname her the Blue Ghost. The name is a tribute to the ship and the crew and air groups that served aboard her. After the war, Lexington was briefly decommissioned, from 47 to 55. When reactivated, she operated primarily with the 7th Fleet out of San Diego, California. Although not involved in actual combat, Lexington kept an offshore vigil during tensions in Formosa, Laos, and Cuba. In 1962, she sailed into Pensacola, Florida, and began training operations, eventually being officially designated the CVT-16, Navy training carrier. The USS Saratoga, or CV-3, was a Lexington-class aircraft carrier built for the United States Navy during the 1920s. Originally designed as a battlecruiser, she was converted into one of the Navy's first aircraft carriers during the construction to comply with the Naval Washington Treaty of 1922. The ship entered service in 1928 and was assigned to the Pacific Fleet for her entire career. Saratoga and her sister ship Lexington were used to develop and refine carrier tactics in a series of annual exercises before the Second World War. On more than one occasion, these exercises included successful surprise attacks on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. She was one of the three pre-war US fleet aircraft carriers, along with the Enterprise and the Ranger to serve throughout the Second World War. The last one is the IGN Shikaku class, the Shikaku. The Shikaku and also Zuikaku in many ways represented the pinnacle of IGN aircraft carrier development in 1937. Unbound by treaty limits since December of 36, engineers were now free to work out the design the Japanese Admiralty really wanted. Planned with 96 aircraft initially, more than the American Lexington and Yorktown or any British carrier, this was revised to a more modest 72 modern models. Low and still very fast at more than 34 knots, well armed and better protected than any aircraft carrier before them. They really were the fulcrum of the Kido Butai, just ready in time to participate for the Pearl Harbor attack. 
They participated in the Indian Ocean Raid, the Battle of the Coral Sea, and faithfully missed the Battle of Midway, but at Santa Cruz and the Solomons before meeting their fate at the Battle of the Philippine Sea in June and of late in October of 44. That's all the carriers that were added to the game, and you can play them if you just follow the link in the description. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.